In the United States, electric car sales almost doubled from January to October 2021 versus the previous year. But when you actually compare these numbers to what's going on in Europe and in China, well, that's when things start to really get interesting. Hello, my friends. Welcome to The Electric Viking. My name is Sam Evans. Fantastic to see so many new subscribers on the channel recently. If you're new, remember, we have made more than 700 videos over the last six months. Make sure you check out some of those videos because I'm seeing a lot of comments in forums, even on some of my videos, especially though in forums of people that are really, really, they're just not educated as to what's really going on with electric cars. A lot of people are saying it's going to take 20 years for the world to transition to electric cars, maybe even 30, making these kinds of ridiculous comments because they just aren't watching my videos or enough of them anyway to actually understand what's really going on. So if you watch them, you'll get a better picture. United States, what's going on in the US? Well, Tesla took 69% of total electric vehicle registrations and it strengthens its position among luxury and premium brands. And Mark Kane from Inside EVs has reported that the all electric car segment in the United States nearly doubled year over year during the first 10 months of 2021, reaching new all time records. Now, according to car registration data from Experian via Automotive News, some 379,000 electric vehicles were registered from January to October 2021, which is 94% more than in 2020 at this point. So pretty close to a doubling versus last year. And that's about 2.9% of the total market compared to 1.7% a year ago. So 3% of the total car market was electric vehicles from January to October. Well, conservatively, we're estimating the numbers in October, but based on those numbers, it could have been more than that. So we may, maybe 3.1%. Now, 5 to 10% appears to have been the bottom of the S curve in a number of different countries. So you are getting there in the US. And what's insane about what's going on here is that in China, 350,000 electric vehicles were sold in one single month, the month of November. So in China, people bought as many electric cars in a single month as they did in the United States from January to October. Just put this into perspective, right? People claiming this is going to take 20 to 30 years. Have a look at what's happening in China. They've gone from 5% of all sales being electric cars last year to 21% in the month of November and 20 and about 19% in the month before that. So if you have a look at these trends, well and truly, it is not going to take 20 to 30 years. And if you think it is, you don't understand mathematics or you haven't been watching this channel. Now, China is just one example of many, but this kind of gives you a good idea here of the scale. People are saying, but, but they can't be made. These electric cars can't be made. Well, how are they made in China? How are these Chinese car producers Basically, most of them, small companies, Legacy Auto is not making these cars, right? These are all new, most of these companies making these cars are fairly new startups. They're not part of this Legacy Auto world, right? So apparently it's hard for these new car companies to build cars. Well, how are they building 350,000 purely, these are not, these are not plug-in hybrids. 350,000 purely electric vehicles were sold in November in China. And you're telling me you can't do this in the US within 20 years. You can, and it will happen. Just have to be patient because what happens is recency bias. We look at what happened last month. We look at what happened in the last six months. It's very hard to distinguish between what happened in the last six months and what will happen in the future. Our perspective of the future is so heavily impacted by the emotion of the past that we project things in a way that's just completely untied to reality. This is reality. Have a look at what's going on in Europe. Have a look at what's going on in Germany. Have a look at what's going on in Norway. Have a look in the UK. Have a look in France. Have a look in China. That is the future reality for the United States. Whether you like it or not, whether you want this to happen or not, that is what is happening. California had the biggest share in the electric vehicle market of 34.3% or about 130,000 electric vehicles sold from January to October. But it is decreasing from 38% a year ago, which is a good thing. The reason for that is the growth rate of 74% year over year, which was lower than the nationwide average. 
why was it lower than the nationwide average? I realistically think that the electric vehicles that people want just aren't here. In other words, actually, there aren't any real electric vehicles in America. Of course, there is Tesla's making them, but no one else is making them right now. All of that will very, very rapidly change. Look at the, I mean, look at the combined amount of money being spent by, say, Tesla, General Motors, Ford, Rivian, Lucid, Stellantis. Look at the combined amount of money being spent by those companies on electric cars over the next five years. It's well over. It's literally well over $100 billion. That's going to produce a lot of electric cars. But I know we're all impatient. We want it to happen fast. So then we get exasperated and start saying silly things like 20 to 30 years. Now, new electric vehicle registrations in the US, January to October, 380,000, up 94% and 3% market share. October, roughly 40,000, give or take. We don't know exactly. I think it's going to be more like 45,000. California, roughly 130,000, which is up 74% and 34% of the total. Now, what about models and brands? The list of the top 10 most registered all electric models reveals the continued domination of Tesla, which has two models, Model Y and Model 3, far ahead of other electric vehicles. And really, I mean, there's lots of little details here, but it all comes down to production numbers. Tesla is producing them. No one else is really producing them en masse, except General Motors has made an effort with the Bolt. Tesla, with 261,000 units, has an almost 70% market share in the electric vehicle segment. And the Model Y, with 134,500, is the most popular model with a very fast growth rate. I think that growth will actually continue next year. Why? I believe Tesla will stop increasing prices. They'll probably decrease prices a little bit once they get production going from Austin, Texas, from that Gigafactory there. When they, once they start producing more of these cars, they'll be able to potentially satiate some of this demand and also produce them at a lower cost. I believe that the Gigafactory in Texas will allow Texas will allow Tesla to produce these cars at probably 20% loss less cost versus what they build them for in California. Now, more than two now around about two out of every three vehicles sold in the united states is either a model three or a model y that's crazy the third most registered car is the chevrolet bolt ev and euv duo unfortunately it's been very strongly affected by a battery recall that has prevented this number from growing quickly which is really disappointing because to be honest, the Chevrolet Bolt is really probably the only realistic, cheaper priced electric vehicle that you'd want to buy right now in America that's made en masse. So it's a bit of a disappointment this has happened. Obviously, GM didn't intend for this to happen. I mean, wouldn't it have been awesome? Just imagine if all the Bolts had been equipped with LFP batteries from CATL or even BYD. They could have charged even less for them. They wouldn't have had these problems. Customers would have been able to get more charge cycles out of their vehicles, charge them to 100%, discharge them to zero, not affect the battery. I mean, it would have just been the perfect solution. Just, it just, honestly, a bit of luck involved here. GM off, off, I feel like GM sometimes doesn't do their research on what, everything that's around. But anyway, this is where we're at. Now, what this means though, is that the Ford Mustang Mach-E has a chance to become number three in 2021. The ramp up of the Tesla Model S will probably allow Tesla's flagship to become number five ahead of the supply constrained Volkswagen ID4. Electric vehicle registrations in the US from January to October 2021. Tesla Model Y with 134,500. That's an increase of 182%. Tesla Model 3, 112,000. That's an increase of 39%. Chevrolet Bolt, 23,000. That's up 47%. Ford Mustang Mach-E, 20,500. Volkswagen ID4, 13,787. Tesla Model S, 12,272. Amazingly, that's an increase of 9.4%, even though they didn't produce it for almost half of the year. That's incredible. Nissan Leaf, 11,933. That's an increase of 100%. Hyundai Kona Electric, 8,620. That's up 265%. Porsche Taycan, 7,818. That's an increase of 156%. Now, I just want to make a little comment here. To all of you guys criticizing Tesla in the forum, saying the Tesla Model S is bad, it's not very good, Porsche is way better. Why are so many more people buying the Tesla Model S if it's not that good? 
And if the Taycan is better, don't get me wrong, I love both of these cars, but I'm just sort of fed up with seeing this anti-Tesla narrative everywhere. Don't, why are you so angry people? Come on, Tesla is good, Porsche is good, Volkswagen is good, these brands making electric cars, they're all doing good things. Let's stop being so negative, hey? Now, Kia Niro electric vehicle. 6,750, that's an increase of 210%. And there's 27 others, 27,000 others sold as well. Now, what about Tesla versus luxury premium brands in the US? Automotive News says that Tesla is strengthening among luxury brands after passing Mercedes-Benz for third in September. Yes, to you haters out there, yes, Tesla is a luxury brand. Whether you like it or not, they are. Now, considering the current momentum that has been seen from Tesla this year, by the end of 2021 or in early 2022, they may take first place in this list. Registrations in the United States from January to October 2021, BMW, 288,000, an increase of 32%. Lexus, 272,000, up 29%. Tesla, 261,000, up 68%. So pretty close to taking over BMW. I think very likely they will by the end of this year. Mercedes-Benz, 230,000, up 9%. Audi, 181,000, up 27%. Acura, 141,000, up 31%. Cadillac, 111,000, up 14%. Volvo, 106,000, up 25%. Lincoln, 79,000, down 5%. By the way, I really like the new Lincoln EV. Hopefully, lots of those are manufactured over the next few years. Land Rover, 69,843, up 13%. Now, I like what Eddie G had to say about all of this. Eddie said, as less gas is being sold, decline in demand goes hand in hand with decline in prices. Usually that has worked, but when demand and price fall below cost of operations for states and refineries with no hope of recovery, they either have to close down, file bankruptcy, or raise their prices. Also, that percentage of electric vehicles in America is an anomaly. The day of the smelly, oily ice engines is dying. It is just logical, catalytic converters included. Talking about generations, the new ones will not put up with exhaust fumes. Why should they, when there is now a viable alternative? And then Mike said to this, right? I like what Mike said. He said, I can't stand the odor of gasoline, liquid or burnt, and I'm a baby boomer. I never noticed it before I got my electric car. It's kind of like being an ex-smoker. Now consider that globally, we'll end the year at around seven to eight percent market penetration for electric cars. Obviously, that figure is a lot higher than what you're seeing right now in the United States, but it's propped up by countries like China, Norway, Sweden, France, Germany, UK, etc. The rest of the world is growing fast enough to keep downward pressure on the price of batteries, and also increase ice costs as they lose economies of scale. In a few more years, ice will be unaffordable for most people for a variety of reasons. The cost of operation, cost of servicing, the cost of long-term ownership. If you look at typical S-curves, it takes as long to hit 2% market penetration as it does to go from 2% to 80%. This suggests that 80% adoption within the next eight years or so, provided battery supply can keep up, is a likely scenario here. Now remember, it took only one decade to transition from the horse and buggy to automobiles. And remember, when people transition from horses and buggies to automobiles, a lot had to be done, a lot more than has to be done for electric grids, way, way, way more. Remember, what they had to do is they had to pave roads, they had to install gas stations, build out pipelines. The amount of work involved to actually make this automotive network was enormous in comparison to just changing over to using electric cars. Now, this transition will be even faster if we stop giving subsidies to fossil fuel companies to artificially keep gas prices low. Now, according to the Scientific American, in one single decade, cars replaced horses and bicycles to some degree as the standard form of transport for people and goods in the United States. Now, as George says, of course, a small number of horses are still used to this day, just as we'll always have a few niche petrol vehicles. 
But the transition to EVs will very likely be well under 15 years in breadth and maybe much shorter. Thanks for watching the channel. I look forward to seeing you again on the next one. Bye-bye.